Dick Whittington and his cat. A long time ago, there lived a very poor boy named Dick Whittington. His parents had died, so he had nobody to look after him. He was all alone in the world. Dick lived in a small village in the country. He had to work for a living, but it was often hard to find work a young boy could do. His clothes were like rags, and he often went hungry. Dick was very, very poor. At this time, people did not travel far from their homes, so London seemed a long way from Dick's village. The men in the village often used to talk about London and what a wonderful place it was. The men would sit around telling stories about all the rich people who lived in London. They also used to say that the streets of London were paved with gold. Dick would sit and listen to these stories and dream about going to London. Dick believed that if he could get to London, he would be able to pick up the gold from the streets. He thought he would become rich and never have to work or be cold and hungry again. Dick decided he had to see London for himself. He had no idea where London was or how long it would take him to walk there. So, early one morning before the sun came up, Dick put all his clothes into a bundle and started down the road towards London. Dick walked and walked, but he did not reach London. He was feeling tired and hungry when a cart came down the road. It was being driven by a jolly man who stopped and asked, Where are you walking to, young lad? Dick looked up at the man and said, I am going to London to seek my fortune. The man smiled at Dick and said, It's a long walk to London. Jump up here, my lad, and you can ride with me. When they rode into the city of London, Dick was amazed at all the sights and sounds that surrounded him. From high up on the cart, he watched with amazement as they traveled through the crowded streets. Dick had never seen so many people, streets, and houses in all his life. He stared at all the different types of shops they passed. It all seemed new and wonderful to him. After they had crossed London Bridge, the jolly man went his own way. It took Dick some time to get over the surprise of it all. Only then did he begin to look for the streets that were supposed to be paved with gold. He could not find them. He looked high and low, but he could not see them anywhere. Dick began to feel tired and hungry again. It was also starting to get dark. He had to find somewhere to spend the night. He saw a doorway and decided it would be a safe, warm place to curl up 
and go to sleep. In the morning, Dick woke up to the sounds of the city. He had to find some work if he wanted to eat. He walked up and down the streets, asking everyone if they had any work he could do. No one had any jobs to give him. By the end of the day, Dick felt tired and hungry once more. He was so weak from walking that he fell down in the nearest doorway. Well, it just happened that the house was owned by a very rich man called Mr. Fitzwarren. Mr. Fitzwarren was a merchant. He made lots of money by buying and selling all kinds of things to people all over the world. In the morning, Mr. Fitzwarren's cook came out and found Dick asleep on the doorstep. What do you think you are doing? She screamed at Dick. Get up and move off my master's doorstep, you lazy good-for-nothing boy. My master will be back soon and I do not want him to find you lying on the doorstep. Dick looked up at the woman, but he was too weak to move. Then, Mr. Fitzwarren came around the corner. Poor Dick. He thought he was in trouble. Mr. Fitzwarren, however, was not a bad man. He looked at Dick and felt sorry for him. He listened as Dick told him how he came to be in London. Well, said Mr. Fitzwarren, I am always looking for hard-working young lads. You can work for me. So, Mr. Fitzwarren told the cook to take Dick inside the house. He told her to feed the boy and give him some fresh clothes. Dick was delighted and excited that at long last, he would have plenty to eat and somewhere warm to sleep. He decided that one day he would find a way to repay Mr. Fitzwarren for his kindness. Dick did not, however, feel lucky for too long. The cook turned out to be a mean, nasty woman. She treated Dick badly for no reason. Dick was lucky that Mr. Fitzwarren had a very kind young daughter called Alice. She felt sorry for Dick. When Alice found out what the cook was doing to Dick, she told the cook to leave Dick alone. Alice was very kind to Dick. Even though he still had to work very hard, she helped make the days more pleasant for him. Dick had to sleep in a very cold, dark attic at the top of the house. At night, hundreds of mice and rats would come out to play. Dick could not get any sleep. They would run all over his bed and around the room, making a lot of noise. Some nights, he got no sleep at all. Dick would lie in his bed at night thinking, I wish I had a cat. A cat would be a good friend 
and it would chase all the mice and rats away. Dick knew, however, that a cat would cost more than the penny he had. Every day, Dick went to the market to buy food for the cook to prepare. One day as he entered the square, he saw a stall that sold animals and birds. Dick went up to the woman behind the stall and said, That is a lovely cat. Is it for sale? I need a cat to chase away the mice and rats from my room. This is a good cat for chasing rats and mice, said the woman. However, I am not sure if I really want to sell her. Dick begged and begged until the woman felt so sorry for him that she sold him the cat. He paid all that he had, one penny. Dick then left the market feeling very pleased with himself. The cat completely changed Dick's life. He loved the cat. At night, she would chase all the rats and mice away. Finally, he could get a good night's sleep. The cat soon got rid of all the rats and mice in Mr. Fitzwarren's house. Alice came down to the kitchen to thank Dick and his cat. She hated rats. Being a merchant, Mr. Fitzwarren had ships sailing all over the world. He always let the people who worked in his house send things with the captains of his ships to be sold. Everyone then had a chance to make lots of money. A ship was ready to sail for some far-off land, so Mr. Fitzwarren asked all his servants if they had anything they wanted to send with the captain. Dick was the only one in the house who had nothing to sell. Mr. Fitzwarren called for Dick. You must have something you want to send on my ship. Dick looked down at the floor. I have nothing to sell. The only thing I own is my cat. Poor Dick. He loved his cat. She was a very good mouse catcher and he did not want to sell her. You must send your cat, said Alice. Alice had been very kind to Dick, so he did not want to upset her. He agreed to send his cat with the captain of the ship. Dick was very sad. The cat had been a good friend to him at night. Also, the cook kept making fun of Dick laughing at him for sending a cat on Mr. Fitzwarren's ship. Now that his cat was gone, once again the rats and mice kept Dick awake at night. They were, once more, free to run around the room and over his bed. Dick lay awake at night wishing his cat was back and that he had not sent the cat away on the ship.
After a sleepless night, Dick decided he could no longer stay in Mr. Fitzwarren's house. He quietly crept out the back door before anyone was out of bed. Dick had not walked very far when he heard bells ringing. They seemed to be singing a tune to Dick. Turn again, Whittington, Lord Mayor of London. Turn again, Whittington, thrice Mayor of London. Dick stopped and listened until the bells had finished. I must turn again, he said to himself, and go back if I am to be Lord Mayor of this great city. Dick quickly turned around and crept back into Mr. Fitzwarren's house before anyone knew that he had left. Meanwhile, Dick's cat was having a good time. The ship was full of rats, so she was spending her time killing as many of the rats as she could. The crew was very pleased with her. Finally, after sailing for many weeks, the ship reached a far-off country. The captain left the ship to see if anyone wanted to buy anything. The captain met a sultan who invited him to the palace for dinner. The sultan was a very rich man. The food was brought out on beautiful gold and silver plates. Then it happened. Just as they were about to start eating, huge fat black rats burst into the room. There were so many that the servants could not stop them. The servants tried to hit them with sticks, but more rats just kept coming into the room. The rats jumped up onto the tables where the food was. They started to eat it all before anyone could stop them. The captain was completely shocked. He looked in amazement at the sultan and said, Why do you not stop them? How can you put up with all these rats? The sultan turned sadly to the captain and replied, My kingdom is full of rats. We shall have nothing left to eat. I have tried everything to get rid of these rats, but nothing seems to work. Every time we sit down to eat, they get the food before we do. A cat! The captain exclaimed. Your Excellency, why do you not have a cat? A cat? The sultan said, looking at the captain. What is a cat? The captain told the sultan how, in his country, an animal called a cat would catch mice and rats. I would give half my treasure to have a cat in my palace, said the sultan. The captain smiled and said, I have a cat on my ship. What did you say you would give for a cat? I would give half my treasure to the owner of the cat, replied the sultan.
The captain rushed back to his ship and found Dick's cat. He then hurried back to the palace with the cat. He got back just as the servants were bringing more food to the table. Once again, the rats started running into the room, jumping on the gold and silver dishes and eating the food. The captain let Dick's cat go. She raced after the rats. In a short time, she had killed hundreds of them. I must have that cat, cried the sultan. He could hardly believe how quickly the rats were disappearing. In a few days, there were no rats left in the sultan's palace. The captain agreed to sell Dick's cat to the sultan. The sultan then wanted to see what else the captain had for sale. The sailors carried everything that was for sale up to the palace. The sultan bought everything. He gave the captain a casket full of jewels for the cat. The sultan paid ten times more for the cat than for all the other items put together. The captain promised to return with more cats the next year, so the kingdom would never be troubled by rats again. The captain could not wait to tell Mr. Fitzwarren about selling Dick's cat. As soon as the ship docked, he went straight to the house. Mr. Fitzwarren was very pleased that the captain had sold everything on the ship. Mr. Fitzwarren was especially glad the captain had sold Dick's cat for so much. Mr. Fitzwarren quickly sent one of the servants to the kitchen to call Mr. Whittington to come and see him. When the servant asked for Mr. Whittington, Dick thought the man was making fun of him, but he went to see Mr. Fitzwarren just the same. Mr. Fitzwarren looked at Dick and handed him the casket. You are now a very rich man, he said. Your cat has made you a great fortune. Dick was very surprised. Hardly believing his luck, he looked at the casket of jewels. Miss Alice was very happy for Dick. You must get yourself some new clothes, she said. Dick got some new clothes the very next day. He looked tall and handsome in his new outfit. Some years later, Dick asked Mr. Fitzwarren if he could marry Alice. Mr. Fitzwarren gladly said, yes. Sometime later, Dick did become Lord Mayor of London. He was Lord Mayor three times, just as the bells had told him all those years before when they had sung. Turn again, Whittington, Lord Mayor of London. Turn again, Whittington, thrice Mayor of London. 